Hello everyone, this is the Athletic School Podcast. Today our guest speaker is the head football strength coach. Uh, he also worked at Mississippi State, Michigan, North Texas, and he was fired two times before he became the strength coach of the year. So Lewis, thanks so much for for being here with us. And I just I would like to to know more about how was being fired and then being the strength coach of the year. Oh, well, I appreciate you having me on. It means a lot. And yeah, I, you know, I got my first head job after being an assistant for a long time. And I had great visions in my mind of how that was going to go and stuff, but it didn't go the way I thought. And we weren't that good at football. And I was coming into a situation where like I was the new guy and it was the staff that is there was there for four years already. So if we didn't do well that year. It probably wasn't going to end well, so it didn't, and we got fired. Now, it was hard for me because my wife was pregnant, and the health insurance was cutting off, like, the week of the due date, so um, scrambling, you know, scrambling to find a job, panicking a little bit, and uh, calling everyone I knew because I just left another job, and so um, it was stressful, but then we got lucky, and you know, a great situation fell into our lap with Louisiana Lafayette. And, you know, two years goes by and I'm trying to do everything I can once again to just help kids and be a positive light in their life. And it wasn't enough. Didn't win enough games. And there you go. You're off on the street again. And at that point, it really felt like the career could be coming to an end. You know, it really felt like I wasn't. Maybe it was me. Maybe it wasn't. but. I just knew some, like deep down in my heart, I knew something, something wasn't right because I felt like my purpose was to help people. And this platform gives me the ultimate responsibility of that. And I just, I, I, I felt it so much in my heart that I was doing it the right way. And Buffalo gave me another opportunity. And I worked with great people there that, that, went out on a limb to give me another chance. Honestly, I'm a two time fired head guy. I have nothing. I'm not a proven guy. And man, I just, that year was just amazing. Like I, I was, I was not in the best spirits before that. And at the end, it was the greatest year I've ever had because the players had everything to do with it. They were so amazing. The second I met them, I knew it was going to work. And the coaches were incredible and just let me be myself and uh, everything just clicked. You know, it was a shame we only had one year together, but right. that's how it works sometimes. So right. um, that's that's what I told Nicky right. John. You know, the biggest blessings come wrapped in difficulty. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And what kind of set skills you think, uh, not only as a coach, but as a human being made you become the strength coach of the year? I just think it was the players that we won a lot of games. You know, we broke a lot of records at a school that hasn't seen that kind of success before. Um, you know, our head coach got coach of the year in the conference. It was like everyone was succeeding. Our players got first team off conference. Um, we were all, we were almost in the top 25 at a school that has never seen that kind of success. So I think with winning, that just comes with it. So we had a lot of fun too. Like we went, we had a thing called we get to lift tomorrow. Um, after every win, we would go in the locker room and we would, you know, I'd come barging in on them and scream that we get to lift tomorrow and everyone would scream back. And it was just a blast. It really was. And I think that caught the attention of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. No, cool. And you, you mentioned about having fun. Um, how important you think is having fun for you to become a winner? Um, you say how rewarding is it? No, how like... Um, how important is for to have fun? Oh, it's everything. I mean, there's there's so many times where you're in serious situations in this game and and this profession. But man, if you can't smile more often than not, you're wasting your time. And there's so like, being creative is one of my favorite parts of this whole thing. Like having a twist on certain things where the guys never saw it coming puts a smile on all their faces, and it puts a smile on my face too. The way they come in and scream and attack me before the lift, it, it's so 
contagiously positive and everyone just gravitates towards it. You know, I think negativity spreads a lot quicker than positivity, mm -hmm. but it's amazing when positive things happen in your culture consistently. It's so much fun. Right. No, I, I like that. And I feel like so many people like uh, still think that you shouldn't have fun because, oh, I know it's too serious. You got to win, got to win. It's a war. But sometimes when we take things not that serious, but then, you know, start having fun, things uh, becomes like a, a little soft and then becomes easier to win. Right. right. Uh, so um, another question that I had for you is, what are the biggest lessons that you learned throughout all these years being fired, winning games, losing games, winning championship and everything? I think, first of all, don't get lost on who you are. You know, I think there's a lot of situations that could change your perspective on yourself. And I, I've learned that if you keep believing in yourself, when everyone else stops, that's when you'll have your biggest breakthrough. Like if you can't see the blessing in one of the biggest challenges in your life and maybe one of the toughest times, you're probably not going to find it. You know, if you're constantly looking at the other side where, man, it is me and, oh, this does stink. And, uh, well, they just don't, you know, that's their fault. Mm -hmm. You can't get very far thinking like that. So I, I do think believing in yourself when everyone else stops and then knowing the fact that hard work pays off and no one tells you when that those are two things that I just have completely found to believe in this whole journey. And then also being the message you preach. If you're going to get through to any heart on the team, you better have a fire burning in your own heart first. And if you want to have an exciting culture, you better be excited about it. If you want the kids to work hard, you better work hard yourself. You know, it's all the same thing. It's like, don't be a hypocrite. Be the message you try to preach. Don't tell them to take care of their bodies on the weekend when you're goofing around all weekend. It's just, uh, there's a lot of lessons, but those would be three that I would share real quick. Mm -hmm. Cool. Oh, cool. Um, so this past couple of days, I saw many guys posting stuff like uh, the pleasure that they had uh, working with you. And so my next question is, how to build uh, a trust between not only you, but the, the, the coaching staff with the athletes, like, so they don't think, oh, no, that guy's crazy. He's, he's saying bullshit, you know, like, how, how you build that? Because I feel like the guys trust you that much that they go, they go harder just because you, you know, for, for you, basically. I think, you know, it's been overwhelming the last week because of the videos going out, but... Right. Um, the pouring, the outpouring of the players reaching back out to me just means the world to me, you know, and it's, you know, I just think it start go all goes back to the interview. You know, you interview the players the second you meet them, you pour into their life, you try to make it, you know, them feel like they can open up to you about anything. And you explain what you're all about to them. And this is before you even coach them. And then when you do start coaching them, they don't feel like you're just another guy anymore. They feel like they, they have a relationship with you and that's what it is. It, it turns into a very strong relationship that no matter how far or how long you haven't seen the kid, you still feel the same way years later because of what you gave to his heart. Mm -hmm. No, I, I like that. And I think a lot of coaching coaches, they, they miss that. And that's when like good results don't come because it's it's not they don't create that they don't build that relationship and I think it's, it's really important I, I'm an athlete and it's completely different something that you already mentioned being a coach and a difference maker uh, mm -hmm. I think a difference maker uh, build that relationship with the athletes um, so my, my next question is I, I've seen that you are someone that work hard and you make our team to work hard so what luck means to you Luck, it's, um, I, think it, I think it gets very involved when you work very hard. But I also think that you don't have to wish anyone luck that prepares like their life depends on it. You know, I think that's, 
that's the thing. Like you need a lot of luck when you're not prepared. And I think when you are prepared, that's the last thing on your mind. You know, you just feel confident. You don't, you don't need like a hail Mary and God's grace, like at the last second to help you out. You know, I think if you just continue to work, be consistent, run right at your dreams all the time and, and have no fear. I just think that's, that's where your luck comes in. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, I think you, you can, you can create your luck, right. By working hard. So, uh, not, my other question is, um, how, uh, how is the relation between working hard and winning to you? What that means to you? Do you think they are completely related or can you work hard and all win? Of course. Yeah. So uh, Tim Grover's book, Winning, um, that's where I got the concept from with the viral speech that went out. So I recommend anyone that listens to this to buy that book, Winning. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's so true. It's like, that's, that's what I lived. It was work as hard as you can get fired, work as hard as you can get fired. What is happening? Like, what is, what is this? Well, I thought, I thought you work hard, you win, you know, and, and it's, it's not guaranteed. Like no one's really loyal to you. Winning's not loyal to you. And that's where Tim Grover spoke to me. He was like, I mean, the things he said, I'm just like blown away by still, but it's so true. And it's, uh, it's unforgiving, like he says, and the, the work that you have to do is so much and it's still not guaranteed that you get anything you want. It's just guaranteed if you don't work hard that you're not going to get it. So. Right. Cool. No, I like that. And for sure, I need to, to read that book. Um, so you mentioned about having a hard time when you were fired, you and wife and and everything else so like and i've seen so many people successful people uh going through a hard time and over overcome those those hard times and those obstacles so how, how to overcome that how, how how did you do it and the people for the people that are listening to us what could they do to overcome the obstacles that they have in their way so i'm just going to tell you this message i gave the team like there's one of my favorite stories and I'm not sure who wrote it, but one of my favorite stories is the, the story of the butterfly and the butterfly is trying to get out of its cocoon and it's really fighting hard to get out of the cocoon for the first time. So this man sees it and he's like, well, let me help it out. You know, let me help the butterfly get out of the cocoon. So he takes some scissors and clips the edge of the cocoon for the butterfly to get out. Well, He's waiting for the butterfly to fly away. He feels good that he just helped him. Butterfly never flies. So he's wondering why. And what he didn't know was the butterfly needed to fight through that cocoon to force fluid into his wings so it could fly forever. So I think sometimes like a lot of people look for help in all situations when things don't go their way. But the reality is a lot of the time, sometimes you got to fight your own fight because you're going to become what you're able to overcome. And the only reason I'm here today, the only reason we're talking today is because I had to get out of that cocoon on my own. Right. And, and that's, that, that's truly uh, one of the best stories about struggle I can possibly give you guys. Mm -hmm. Cool. No, yeah. Thanks so much for sharing that. And so have you always have that mindset or is something that you learned throughout the years? How did you learn all those things? Like, uh, how you became who you are today? So I've always loved working hard. I've always loved going to an open field and running on my own. You know, no one's there. I got me and my headphones and that's it. And I just, that, that's where I just feel the best. I feel when I'm running a stadium in the dark and no one's up yet and it's just me and I'm at the top of the stadium sitting there. And I just feel at peace when I'm doing that. It makes me feel alive. It makes me feel like I'm reaching my potential. And I think with all that hard work that physically comes with it, I start thinking about a lot of things and I start being able to have better insight on ways to coach kids. And, then, you know, one of my hobbies has always been just try to come up with your own quotes or read a lot or listen to a lot of podcasts. and take concepts but 
make them into your own words, you know, and, and really think about how you can get through to the kids on it. So, I mean, I give a message of the day every day, no matter if it's a run or a lift, and I've been doing it for seven years now. And it doesn't matter what the message is. It matters if it's from my heart and it matters if I'm feeling it so I can give it to someone else. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, I don't know. I, I don't think uh, I'm anything special. <laughs> I don't think, um, you know, I got a lot of imperfections. I got, I'm not anywhere close to my potential and still in my opinion, but um, I do love helping the kids and I love sharing stuff that I can with them. Right. Nice. Cool. Um, in my, my next question for you about more, more about your coaching way, the way that you coach that I have seen many videos. So like uh, we were talking about the relationship that, that you build with the athletes. Um, how important is to see the athlete as a person as well, like outside, outside the sport? Yeah, it's, it's huge. You know, I go back to having a son and a daughter and two daughters. It's, it's, if you don't look at those kids, you're coaching, like they are somebody's son, you're wrong. You know, it's, they, they are absolutely loved to death by their family. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to try to create doubt in a kid's heart by yelling at them or degrading them or embarrassing them in front of people, and you don't have a good, good relationship with them, good luck. You know, you're probably not going to be in coaching for long. You can get on kids and you can have tough love, but at the end of the day, you better put your arm around them and you better make sure they understand that you love them because this profession is, I mean, I've seen some nasty things now where people just don't care. Like they, they'll yell at a kid and not lose sleep at all and not care how he feels about it. And they'll yell at him for doing something that they couldn't do themselves. That's what kills me. So um, I just think looking at my kids that I have at home and then looking at them, it's not much different. You got to have that love in your heart for all of them. Right. No, I, I, I like that. Um, just to kind of wrap it up here, I have a couple other questions to you. Um, how, would you how would you define success? Being yourself and going for something that you believe you're here for. Like you, when you have a purpose filled heart, that's, that's success. Like everyone thinks they got to chase success. Look, when you wake up every day with your purpose, success is going to find you. And I wasn't like trying to do this. Uh, I didn't have a blueprint. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I wanted to do a great job for great people. And that's, that's what I tried to do and where that's gotten me and where I've had to move because of that didn't matter to me. I didn't care where I had to move. I didn't care what I had to do. And I just wanted to be in college football strength coaching. I wanted to do a good job for good people. And, and that's where it's taken me. I've found my purpose. Therefore, success finds you. And that's my advice to people. Wake up knowing what you love, knowing what you want to do. And it's coming for you. Mm -hmm. Do you think someone can be successful without working hard? No, it's impossible. You can't, I mean, yeah, you can get handed down something by your family, but like, other than that, I mean, if you, if you ever want to enjoy something, I'll just say that if you ever want to enjoy something, you're not going to, unless you earn it, like anything handed down to you is not going to last long because you don't appreciate it that much. You know, and if you if you love something and you have to work so hard to get it, when you do get it, you're going to keep it going forever because you know how hard it took and you know how much you had to do to get that feeling. So you're going to be paranoid to lose it. Mm -hmm. Nice. I, I like that. Okay, so my, my final question is, um, if our life was a book and you were the author, um, how would you like the book to finish? You're not going to be here forever, but the goal was never that. It was to be in other people's hearts forever. Nice. I, I like that. that. That would be a good book. <laughs> right. But, well, thank you so much for, for taking the time to talk with us. I know you have a pretty busy schedule. Um, I, I wish we could, we could talk more, but 
thanks so much. I, I really appreciate I I love the work that you were doing there, not only with your players, but just sharing everything. Like uh, I saw your video, like I mentioned before, I save it on Instagram. And like, it's something that if I need like a boost, I'm going to watch it because I know that that will push me. And I post our video on, on our page and a lot of people saw, a lot of people like it, people in Brazil, in other countries. So thank you. Thanks so much. Thank for, for, for the work that you have done for, for everyone. And you mentioned about being passionate and being on other people's heart. And I'm pretty sure that you, that, that you are doing that for sure. And so thank you so much. Well, I appreciate you too. And I think you're doing a great thing. So just, you know, keep being yourself, keep believing yeah. and you're on your way, man. It's, it's, it's been a fun conversation and you're doing a great job. So yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. No